Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. In this video, I'm setting up a mid server on Windows Server 2022 on my Windows 10 PC using Hyper V and a trial version of Windows Server. And um, I wanted to show you what I'm doing, what I've done, set up before the video took place. I actually recorded this and it just didn't work because I had to do some things. I set up a mid server account in my PDI. That's right, I'm trying to connect my PDI to um, Windows Server. So. Uh, to a mid server. So there I set up this account, Windows Server underscore 2022 underscore mid. And for that particular account, I gave it the role of mid underscore server, which you can see down there on the bottom. Mid underscore server gave it the rest of these roles. They were inherited. Um, once I applied that, you've probably known all this. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. And so now let's go to my mid server uh, or to my Windows server. One of the things that I had to do, I made a separate video is um, the disk size by default for a Windows Server virtual hard drive or VHT wasn't big enough. It was like 40 gigs and I needed at least 30 gigs free um, in order for that to work with. So I had to go do some things to make it bigger, but now it's as big as I need it. We're in um, my Windows Server 2022 looking at the file explorer, but there's server manager and I don't know what happened to my taskbar down there. Um, that's interesting. Let's try to make it bigger and bring it back. Uh, there we go. Okay, there's my taskbar. All right, so um, there's my mid-server download that I had in there. The thing that I did on here in the last video that you should probably see is I set up a user using the wizard. I didn't actually do this with um, the tools you're seeing here, but I want to go show you the user that I did set up. So I've got under users, I've got this mid server or mid underscore server underscore user. It's got a name, it's got a password. And if we go into the local security policy, which I'll show you here, local security policy, under local policies and user rights assignments, there is a login as a service. And I made sure that my mid server user that I created was in there. Now, the, the wizard for the mid server did all this and still didn't work. I had to exit the wizard and come back in um, after I verified all this and then it worked. It didn't work when I created it right there. So you could do this ahead of time, save yourself some troubleshooting um, with what I just showed you there uh, by making sure that the user account's created and it has logged on to the service. But now let's minimize all that and go fire off this wizard or Windows installer for the mid server. Now I'm gonna have to plug in some instance information and names and passwords. Um, so I'll make sure all of that is up and ready to go while the Windows server, Windows installer is preparing to install. Let's click next on that one. Let's accept the terms and not read them. And let's go ahead and put in my instance URL. Uh, and I will not say this out loud and I will blur this out in post so that I don't put my PDI instance name all over the internet, even though it probably already is at this point. Um, oh shoot, my mid server username, which I just showed you, is Windows underscore server underscore 2022 underscore MID. And my password, which I will not say out loud, I will type it in and let you hear me talking and my keyboard uh, typing as I put in all these lowercase, uppercase numbers and symbols, and we'll test the connection. Now this is actually gonna reach out to the uh, PDI and make sure that the username and password are valid. I got a successful test on that, so I can click next to continue. So we'll go ahead and click close and next. And this is where we're gonna set up the local service account that I just showed you before, making sure that I had them log in as a service enabled. So clicking next here, there we go. Mid server name, I can call this whatever I want. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna follow what I'm seeing as a convention there. I'm just going to call this Windows Server 2022 uh, MID. And then the account name, it's going to show you all the users that have logged on as a service. Uh, there's only one on this particular uh, server. So I'm going to put that in and then I'm going to enter the password um, and not say it out loud, uh, just like the other password that I put in and uh, all the uppercase, lowercase symbols, numbers, and all that stuff. So now I get to validate the mid-service settings. I'm assuming this is checking that that account that I just provided and the password actually work. I did get a valid service settings, press next. I haven't been past this step. Actually, I have been past this step. This is where I got the error message when I said yes to C colon backslash, which I still feel is a weird uh, path for using for something. I, I just somehow in my past, I remember we shouldn't do things in the root of a hard drive uh, or a disk on a Windows server. 
but that's what this is defaulting to and I don't want to change this so if you know leave me a comment down below do you leave yours in the root of the hard drive or do you actually put this in a folder I'm curious what other people do I'm gonna click next and there should be plenty of disk space after this so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a screenshot of this particular one so I have that um, I like to document a lot of things. I checked the start mid server after installation checkbox right there. So let's go ahead and click next and install. Let it do its thing. And then the last piece that I want as part of this video is this once this mid server is running, I'm going to go back into my PDI and make sure that I see the mid server. When I did this in a Windows Docker container running Linux or CentOS, um, all I could see was a bunch of stuff on the screen um, in the bash window or terminal. Um, showing it starting up and that's about you know there's no there's no um, desktop component installed with that particular container so um, this is going to be a different experience for me and having an actual desktop to interact with and we're getting to see that installation happen as I'm talking here so it looks like it might be wrapping up and it is so let's click finish everything looks good now in Windows Server we can go in and see our services that are running so let's go back to computer management and see under the local services is uh, is there a mid service or mid server running with that um, mid server service account that I set up previously. So let's go down to services and applications, click on services, and uh, it'll be interesting. Is this going to say service now? Is it going to say mid server? Uh, we'll see here. Let's try mid server first. M I C K E Y. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, service now maybe so it was under mid there it is service now mid server underscore windows underscore server let's just make this a little wider my VM machine has a really tight screen so I'm gonna have to scroll a little bit and the heads not in the way so there it is there it is and it's running and it is automatic automatically starting up and my login is we can't really see let's see if we can make that bigger is that mid server user uh, with a dot slash in front of it, interestingly enough. Okay, so let's go back to my PDI and take a look at my mid servers and see what that looks like. I just want to see all of the mid servers. Um, let's see. Let's go to. Uh, let's go here. I didn't want to go to an application. I wanted to go to. Oh wow! Look at this. So I've got my Windows Server 2022 mid. There is the host name, which I don't even remember giving it that host name. My status is up, but it has not been validated. It is running on Utah. Um, so success so far, let's go validate it. I'm gonna open the mid server and there should be a validate UI action or a button for me to do that. Unable to detect PowerShell host version on the host machine. Uh, that's okay, we'll worry about that later. Let's go ahead and validate it. And let's see, okay, we've got options are being validated. Approve setting the initial criteria. Allow all applications, all capabilities, all IP ranges. Heck yeah, I'm in my lab, in my office. I don't care, world should be wide open. There's a firewall in my house um, that shouldn't let anything bad happen to me here in my office. Um, in fact, I think there's a firewall on my router in my office. Um, looks like it is validating. You can see that updating in real time. Um, validated at 323 by admin. Um, validated at, but it's still validating. That's interesting. Uh, let's see what we see going on on the actual server itself. Do we see a spike in like activity or something? Um, that'd be neat, right? If we could see that correlation. I'm just pulling up the task manager to see if we can look at um, the process or performance. And yeah, there's a little tiny spike there a second ago, so maybe it's done. Let's go back to here. Nope, still validating. Let's refresh the form. Still unable to detect the PowerShell. It is still validating, so that's still going on. Uh, yeah, it looks like there's still a little action going on on the server, but not much. I mean, this is a VM running like uh, maybe a couple gigs of memory. Uh, what is it? Two gigs of memory and uh, less than four gigahertz of CPU that's running pretty low. Um, the Ethernet sucks. I'll tell you, when I downloaded that image, it took forever. Um, and I've got a good internet connection, but it seems to be still working at that. Um, it's still validating. So this might take a little bit for it to validate it, but I've accomplished what I wanted to for this video. I got my server set up regardless of the disk space problems, and now it is validating. And if I have to fix anything on validating, I can make another video for that. I just wanted you guys to see that uh, something different from a mid container, which I've done in the past. This is a mid server running on Windows server that's virtualized on my Windows 10 PC. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in running their own mid server on Windows server 
in their home lab to learn more about ServiceNow. Until next time, don't forget to always be learning.